Greetings, and welcome to a presentation on MCG technology, the latest and greatest in heart disease diagnosis brought to you by Premier Heart. My name is Rafi Shen, representing Dr. Shen and Premier Heart International, delivering MCG technology, an AI-based solution purpose-built to provide objective, early detection, enabling prevention and improving cardiovascular disease care. Throughout our existence as a company, there have been two driving philosophies that have sustained us. Impossible is not a fact, it's an opinion. Many of these techniques used in the creation, implementation, and validation of MCG are considered by most to be impossible in the conventional world of diagnostic medicine, but we pursued it regardless of the naysayers and found our own success. Arthur Schopenhauer's famous Three Stages of Truth perfectly describes our experience in the long journey to bring MCG technology to the world over all these years. Now, after years of hard work and determined grit, we are experiencing increasing acceptance as MCG's effectiveness becomes self-evident. But before we can dive in, I'd like to discuss why we were compelled to create MCG technology. Traditional EKG is obsolete. But why? What drove us to this conclusion? During our formative years as a company to build our proprietary neural network, we needed to make deep dives into the world of academic peer-reviewed publishing. We discovered in uh, the early 1990s that we could not rely upon the majority of peer-reviewed published literature due to a number of factors, which we will be discussing later in the presentation. We instead chose to rely upon an empirical, evidence-driven process that used real-world data to design, verify, and validate our technology. Our goal was to transform an industry in which of 500 million ECGs performed each year, only 15 to 20 percent of acute cases of myocardial dysfunction were detected. According to an internal memo of a large medical malpractice law firm in the U.S., 72,000 deaths occur each year within 30 days after patients are admitted for chest pain complaints and then subsequently discharged from an emergency room, with estimated malpractice claims ranging between 80 to 100 billion dollars a year. Based upon our aforementioned deep dive in the late 1980s and early 1990s, we discovered that of 100,000 patients who underwent coronary angiography based on positive stress imaging test results, only a disappointing 40% of patients were diagnosed with critical coronary stenosis. These numbers have also been reproducibly verified and validated by studies performed by Manish Patel of Duke University, who data mined the information of 400,000 or so patients from the ACC database for coronary angiographies in 2010, and Medscape in 2014, who performed a 600,000 patient study looking at the same datasets from hospitals like UCLA, Mount Sinai, Massachusetts General, Cleveland Clinics, and etc. Further exploration and meta-analysis of the publicly available data on fMRI also indicated unacceptably high false positive rates. The same can be said for PET and CT scans. In fact, one of the most egregious examples is from a multi-billion dollar NIH genomic study in which it was found that genomic-based assessments only provided a paltry 1.2% correct conclusion rate when these procedures often include glaring negative impacts from radiation, IV contrasts, high costs, and general inaccessibility, being less accurate than a coin flip is simply unacceptable. But how can a system provide an accurate, objective, non-invasive, and timely diagnosis to patients around the world? To answer that, we turn to the theoretical work of mathematicians like Jean-Baptiste Joseph Fourier, Harry Nyquist, Joseph Louis Lagrange, Leonhard Euler, Norbert Wiener, and yes, even some principles from William Eindhoven. To delve into a full explanation of the applied Lagrangian mechanics used in our technology would be beyond the scope of this presentation, but to lay out some basic principles. Blood flow is a non-Newtonian fluid that can be optimally assessed and reported via Euler coordinates, while cardiac and brain tissue are viscoelastic solids that can be assessed and reported much the same with Lagrange coordinates. These mathematical breakdowns of different parts of the human cardiovascular system can then be linked by an application of Laplace transformations, which allows us to fully explore the expressions of the interactions between an input and an output, namely lead V5 and lead 2. Through our research, we have chosen six dynamic and integrative mathematical functions of the many possible expressions within the system to act as the backbone of our analysis, namely the auto power spectrum, phase angle shift, impulse response, cross-correlation, coherence function, and transfer function. 
I don't know if we have any signal processing engineers in the audience today, however, combining these applications of Lagrangian mathematics is, to our knowledge, an absolute first in the industry. Now, there's a substantial amount of math that would need to be described if we had to break down all six functions, so for today we will speak of two examples. The first is phase shift, which describes how the input being lead V5 and the output being lead 2 are synchronized. Picture two clocks that can either be tinking simultaneously in sync or out of sync within a specific frequency band. If there are delays in one part of the heart due to, say, regional or localized ischemia, this function will show a spike or a number of spikes on a graphic plot, which is very useful in the detection and quantification of myocardial damage, ischemia, myocardial remodeling, and etc. The second, being impulse response, meanwhile, describes how the lead V5 side responds to the signals or stimulation from the lead 2 side. For example, the quality of the impulse response can be displayed graphically and quantified mathematically to measure myocardial compliance and various forms of arrhythmia, regardless of whether the patient's conventional EKG detects it. Ventricular hypertrophy of all cases, myocardial inflammation, and myocardial infarction old and new can also be detected in this function. Despite the complexity of the mathematics involved, our test, as long as a broadband internet connection is available, can be performed in only 10 minutes. A patient lays in a resting position while the electrodes are attached to leads V5 and 2, at which point a resting EKG is recorded around 5 times for 82 seconds for each recording, before the data is then digitized, encrypted, and transmitted to our servers such that our diagnostic engine can perform the mathematical transformations to break the data down into 168 indices. Once that is performed, the indices are pattern matched against the indices of a larger database of patients whose data has been verified via coronary angiogram results and other platinum standards of diagnostic care, before the final results are then collected into an easy-to-read report that is made available online. These tests can be performed at bedside, in emergency room settings, and anywhere else that has access to a stable internet connection. Our discovery of the mathematical elements was perfected by years of empirical data mining, repeated evidence-driven verification and validation, and constant optimization. Though the development process was long, our commitment to not take shortcuts has given us a system unlike anything offered in the market. To validate our claims, we performed multiple double, sometimes even triple blind clinical trials performed independently in eight countries like the USA, Germany, Japan, India, China, Singapore, Myanmar, and Malaysia to reproducibly generate diagnostic results for thousands of patients without any quid pro quo between the third-party investigators and our business. We wanted to do our utmost to avoid the usual pay-to-play practices tainting the efficacy of our technology, and we are quite fortunate to have encountered excellent people from around the world who were willing to follow our design protocol, understood our reasoning, share their data with us, and work on the validation trials for free because they understood the urgent need for a better diagnostic tool. But in order to perform this diagnosis, what does MCG measure? Our system measures the interactions and communications between the above-mentioned EKG signal sources, V5 and 2, which allows us to view the cardiovascular system from a high-level perspective, rather than chasing specific indicators and listening to the system so that we can understand what it is communicating to itself as it manages and copes with the problems it has had put upon it. The numerical complexity is astounding, and yet due to our hard work, we are capable of tackling a number of currently unmet needs in the world of clinical diagnosis, differentiating the normal from the abnormal, measuring electromechanical, electrostructural, electrobiochemical, electrohematological, electroneuroendocrine and neurohormonal, electroimmunological, and even electromyocardial perfusion expressions of the cardiovascular system. With that being said, how does MCG perform? To answer that, we have a summary here of a meta-analysis from multiple independent clinical validation sites from multiple countries. Each trial followed the same protocol for qualitatively, quantitatively, and directly comparing MCG to coronary angiography, using the same cutoff point of 75% stenosis of a large epicardial coronary artery along with the testing for the presence or absence of ischemia based on MCG criteria. The analysis performed by both the MCG and angiography was then carefully vetted by independent biostatisticians to verify the results and conclusions. 
Their findings showed that MCG has an overall sensitivity of 91.2% and a specificity of 84.6% for men and women with or without revascularization procedures, both above and below the age of 65. Our negative predictive value was overall 92.6%. This compared to the disease incidence rates, or the overall rate of clinical stenosis, of 33.6%. Recall now that our initial analysis of 100,000 patients that underwent coronary angiographies, the Patel study of 400,000 patients, and the Medscape study of 600,000 patients showed a 40% incidence rate. And know that in the validation trials performed for MCG that the rates were actually found to be even lower. And this is a direct side-by-side -side comparison between MCG and nuclear stress imaging tests, using the results of coronary angiograms as the final adjudicating modality to ensure that we were objective and accurate. This was a triple-blinded trial and also monitored independently to ensure the accuracy of the results. Nuclear stress tests showed very poor specificity, as predicted, 14% overall and 8% for women indicating that many patients are sent for invasive coronary angiography procedures unnecessarily. As a result of our findings, MCG was granted a unique CPT code by the AMA CPT panel with the explicit support of the Rhythm Society in the USA, and immediately following this, Highmark Medicare approved a local coverage policy to cover the physician reimbursement for MCG. These decisions were made completely independently by the medical directors of Highmark Medicare without our participation or knowledge, with the intent to use MCG to replace all stress imaging tests and CTA. Any other team or entity would perhaps be satisfied with our demonstrations to date. However, we continue to develop new sets of criteria to further optimize performance, increasing the difficulty of our validation process by now also upgrading the double-blinded direct coronary angiography comparison protocol to now also include functional fractional reserve pressure gradient measurements across a point or segment of stenosis. Through our efforts, MCG demonstrated specificity that ranged from 83 to 93.9%, and even further beyond that, if investigators considered MCG's lower functional scores and categories for ischemia detectable from patients with complete collateral circulation as true negative cases, the system would show a sensitivity as high as 100% for the trial population. This trial manuscript was accepted by BMJ's Open Heart Journal in 2014 and is one of the highest honors we have received by the peer review world. And further demonstrating MCG technology's capabilities, investigators in Japan performed an extraordinary endeavor by performing a direct comparison between MCG and classical and functional syntax scores, an effort normally reserved for triple vessel diseases and academic pursuits. Not only did MCG demonstrate excellent specificity and accuracy, it proved its use in not only identifying significant coronary ischemia, but also reducing unnecessary coronary angiographies, with a vigorous validated and accuracy and specificity range between 89 to 100 percent. In fact, ongoing trials such as a three-year outcome trial that is still in progress have thus far indicated that MCG can demonstrate a 100 percent accuracy rating in the detection of the recurrence of critical stenosis in both diseased coronaries and previously normal coronaries in patients that have received coronary intervention. After performing more independent data mining, MCG also demonstrated increasing accuracy if the target target endpoint for a significant drop in pressure gradient ratio was reduced from 0.8 to 0.75, once again ensuring that our algorithmic optimization was working as intended. The more stringent the criteria for comparison, the better MCG performs. Note, the disease incidence rate for 0.75 cutoff was only 16% versus the usual 40% from relying upon the subjective readings of coronary angiograms alone. Unlike all current modalities which show no impact on improving diagnostic accuracy per the earlier mentioned Patel and Medscape studies, MCG test results can fit into various risk assessment models and opens the door for further clinical investigations to improve care, including seven risk factors and four laboratory values. Age and sex, meanwhile, were determined as not being necessary because MCG analysis is normalized for both age and sex, with our database containing patients ranging from 14 to 100 years old and our population split 50-50 for males and females. 
These foundational pillars of our design allow MCG to achieve unprecedented accuracy regardless of the age or sex of the patient. More importantly, MCG can also detect and quantify abnormalities caused by metabolic diseases, such as type 2 diabetes, normally considered an Achilles heel for imaging tests and entirely impossible for stress imaging tests. Other data mining efforts also showed a strong correlation between levels of disease severity categories of our own design and the levels of HBNP. The higher the MCG category, the higher the levels and more likely the HBNP would be abnormal. This finding points to the use of MCG as an independent and significant predictor for heart failure, a test that's desperately needed to assess patients with potential for heart failure, especially the detection of those patients in their earlier reversible stages, regardless of the cause. That said, a cardiovascular disease is complex and can take on a number of forms. This table shows four types from the anatomic perspectives, as well as in a comparison of the detection capabilities of MCG and current diagnostic methodology. Type 1 is intermediate coronary artery lumens encroachment of 50% or less, which is generally a no-man's land. These patients are often asymptomatic. MCG, however, can easily detect these patients and deliver early detection to enable effective prevention and disease reversal. Type 2 is vasospasm and endothelial dysfunctions. These patients often have high symptoms and normal coronary angiography results. However, they too can develop myocardial infarction and its complications. MCG can still easily detect these patients and deliver early detection to enable effective prevention and disease reversal. And type 3, the entire field of cardiology is devoted to this type of patient, ones diagnosed with critical stenosis, as in 75% or greater of a large epicardial coronary artery blockage, and are practically destined for PCI slash stenting, or coronary artery bypass grafting. In our view, this diagnosis may be too little too late. Even here still, MCG performs better than all current imaging tests. And type 4, which includes patients with type 2 diabetes with small vessel disease or other causes such as anemia in taking chemicals and drugs, infectious causes and the like can lead to significant myocardial distress and dysfunction. These are not at all all detectable using our current imaging technology, but MCG can make a difference. Based on the latest $100 million 10-year ischemia outcome study, there is no difference in terms of the rate of MACE, including sudden cardiac death, between interventional and medical treatment arms. A glaring point that is generally missed, however, is that 13 to 15 percent of patients who suffer from MACE were misdiagnosed by both arms of the trial, which means that all the conventional cardiology tools available to us in our arsenal missed these patients. If detected early, all of these events are not only preventable but reversible. This is yet another place where MCG can shine, identifying patients that otherwise would have been completely missed, and we consider this to be the most important reason as to why MCG needs to exist. Despite the many challenges we have faced, we have come a long way to overcome the tremendous obstacles in our journey to deliver MCG for the good of all, and we would like to take this time to thank those who have invested in and use MCG regularly, embracing new solutions in the face of once intractable problems. In conclusion, with MCG, early detection and prevention using smart technology is a consistent reality. Thank you for your time today.